Ooh, my poor head. I believe I overdid it at Dame Agnes Bash last night. Did you hear anything there that might be of interest to us? I heard many things, Holmes, mostly from the chattering mouth of Pierre Donnet, world-renowned expert on de Kuyper. He has managed to do shockingly well for himself, considering 20 years ago he was a starving artist. But then his ship came in. Whatever do you mean? In 1872, he discovered the first de Kuyper in a church attic in Brussels. Soon after it sailed to Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, he began a whole new and extravagant life. I suppose that's why he can afford to keep a luxurious suite at the Langham Hotel. Did his discovery of the de Kuyper catapult his own work into the spotlight? Hardly. Ooh. In fact, Donet has never sold a painting done by his own hand. There were four of us on duty when the theft occurred. Our shift starts at 4 p.m., and upon our arrival, we prepare the gallery for its closing at 5. Now, on the day of the robbery, by a quarter past five, all the employees of the gallery had left for the day, with the exception of Sir Simpson and Mr. Norris. Was that unusual? No, sir. It is their custom to remain until the gallery is secured. I personally let Sir Simpson out through the main entrance at half past five. Mr. Norris stayed on because he was expecting a delivery. What time did the delivery arrive? I'd say it was a quarter to six when our Cummins and Goins wagon arrived. Charlie and I helped Mr. Norris and the delivery men unload one large crate and two smaller ones. Do you know where these deliveries were from? I'm not sure about the larger one, but the two smaller ones were from Jardines. What happened after the crates were unloaded? The delivery men left. Charlie locked and barred the loading dock door. Mr. Norris went into the storeroom to check his shipment, and I returned to the guardroom. Did you see him open any of the crates? No, sir, I didn't. What happened next? At half past six, Mr. Norris informed me that he'd locked the storeroom and would be leaving for the evening. And you let him out? Yes, sir, through the main entrance. Then I made my rounds through the office wing, checking all the doors to make sure they were secured. And how did you spend the rest of the evening? Looking after my rounds. I took the 11 clocker through the east wing. At about 11.10, all the paintings were in their proper place in Gallery 12. Then Charlie made his rounds, following the same path that I'd just made, except when he arrived at Gallery 12, the two de Kuiper paintings had been cut from their frames. What time was that? I answered his alarm at 11.35 and sent him to check the loading entry in the office wing. Have you any idea how the thief got into the museum? No, sir. The only keys to the outside doors are kept in the guardroom or in the custody of the patrolling guards. Sir Simpson and Mr. Norris are the only staff members who have keys, and even they only have keys to the inside doors. Well, that's all I know. I hope I've been of some help, sir. The shipment of Nubian art consigned to the National Gallery was delivered to Wells Warehouse at 38 Blackfriars Bridge Road on the instructions of Mr. Brady Norris five days ago. This one is most intriguing, Watson. What have you unearthed this time, Holmes? This warehouse was rented by Matthew Cole. Until yesterday, that is. Sir Jasper, could I trouble you for a few moments of your time? Always a pleasure to help, Watson. But I must admit I'm not much of an art buff. Actually, I wanted to ask you about Matthew Cole, the chap that died in the fire. Yes, well, he may have died in the fire, but according to my autopsy findings, he definitely did not die because of the fire. What? Not a trace of smoke in the chap's lungs. No, I'd say the nasty bump on his head was what caused his demise.
Excuse me, Dr. Murray, may I have a moment of your time? Ah, Whitson, so nice to see you again. It's Watson, sir. Glad to hear it. Now, what can I do for you, Whitson? Holmes and I are interested in the debris from the fire of Matthew Cole's hotel room. Aye, such a tragedy. Everything was soaked with kerosene. Uh, no doubt this one was arson. Uh, not much left to analyse. I found a key in his pocket. Uh, no number on it, though. Ah, but there was one other thing. A piece of canvas oil painting. An oil painting? Aye, it was smeared with Prussian blue paint. Oh, may I have a look at it? No, sorry. I sent it over to London University for my brother Mortimer to examine. He's a professor of chemistry, you know. An expert on paint pigments. You are mistaken. Science does not lie. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Monsieur Murray, I am one of the world's greatest experts on De Kuyper, and I tell you this painting was painted by the hand of De Kuyper. Uh, Mr. Beauclair, I am not an art expert. <laughs> you state the obvious, monsieur. Uh, but I am an expert on paint pigments and their chemical composition. And I tell you that any painting containing Prussian blue is not from the 17th century. The process to create Prussian blue had not yet been developed. That paint cannot be more than 30 years old. You don't know what you are talking about! Good day, gentlemen.